Hello everyone. Welcome back to Maxim Automation. In my last video, we discussed Selenium RC architecture and how Selenium bypasses the same origin policy by using HTTP proxy server. Today in this video, I'm going to discuss Selenium web driver architecture. We'll discuss how Selenium web driver works and how it is different with Selenium RC. So first, let's discuss what web driver is. In my last video, we discussed that Selenium was developed by Jason Huggins and it was first released as Selenium Core. Then after, due to limitation of Selenium Core, Selenium RC was introduced by Paul Hammond. In 2007, Simon Stewart at ThoughtWorks developed another automation tool for web applications called Web driver. In Web driver, he implemented the browser API call to simulate the browser events instead of running JavaScript using the JavaScript engine of the browser. So instead of injecting the JavaScript into the browser, he used the browser APIs to perform the user actions because it doesn't rely on the JavaScript. Web driver has the implementation for different browsers. Using web driver, you can control the actions on the web browser. Also, it was a platform and language independent protocol to remotely control the behavior of web browsers. In Selenium 1 or Selenium RC, we need to invoke the Selenium server to run our test. But in Selenium web driver, we do not need a server to execute the test. Now, the web driver directly starts a browser instance using the browser driver and controls it. With the help of browser driver, web driver uses native browser APIs rather than browser-based JavaScript commands to perform the user action. This also bypasses the security problems like same origin policy while injecting JavaScript into the browser. So Selenium Web Driver is basically an interface to pass instruction to different browsers. Selenium Web Driver accepts command through the Selenium client library, which can be written in any languages like Java, C Sharp, Python, and then forward those commands to the browser. Web Driver does not send the command directly to the browser. It sends the command to a browser specific driver which again sends command to a browser and then retrieves the result. Most of the browsers provide their driver, which is used by the Selenium web driver to pass the instructions to perform user actions on a browser. Using those browser drivers, we can launch and access a browser application and then can simulate the user actions. So Selenium web driver makes direct calls to the browsers using each browser's native support for automation. For example, there is Chrome driver binary available, which is basically an executable, and we can download this from the Chrome driver website. This Chrome driver acts as a bridge between the Chrome browser and the web driver. Basically, web driver don't know how to control the browser actions or which API can be used to simulate the user actions. So for each browser, there is a native automation support available in the form of browser driver. And this browser driver knows how to interpret the command in the form of JSON wire protocol sent by the web driver. And then based on the command browser driver, call the respective API of a browser to perform the user action. So when Simon developed the web driver to simulate the user action, then in 2009, it was decided to merge the two projects, Selenium and web driver together. And the new project is called as Selenium web driver or Selenium 2.0. And then finally, in 2011, Selenium web driver was released. They not only developed the web driver, but they requested W3C to make WebDriver 
as an internet standard so that every browser must implement the APIs to perform the user actions. This is how Selenium web drivers came into existence. If you see this diagram, then first we have a Selenium web driver interface to send the commands. In Selenium 1 or Selenium RC, these commands were sent to the Selenium server to perform the actions in the form of HTTP requests like GET or POST requests. But now, using WebDriver, these commands are passed in the form of JSON wire protocol to the browser driver. So the communication between browser driver and the Selenium take place through JSON wire protocol. Here, the browser drivers are basically the servers which implements the web driver's JSON wire protocol and knows how to convert the Selenium commands into the native browser's API. Now the question here is, what is JSON wire protocol? As we know that today JSON is one of the most widely used and accepted method for communicating between different systems. In the web services or web APIs, now JSON is the most widely used. Initially, it used to have XML. So WebDriver also uses JSON to communicate between client libraries and the browser drivers. The request is sent in the form of HTTP request, which contains the payload in the form of JSON. Browser drivers are designed to interpret these JSON provided by the web driver. And after it interprets the command passed by the web driver, browser driver calls the respective browser APIs to perform the user actions, as mentioned in Selenium or Test Script. When the operation is performed, then the response is also shared back to the web driver in the form of JSON. So basically, JSON wire protocol uses the process of serialization, which means to convert the data into the JSON format and deserialization, which means to convert JSON format into the data or object understood by the server. Same as it happens in the REST API. So this is the architecture of Selenium web driver. I hope you like this video. Put your comments in the comment box. Also, please do not forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.